Boy, it is damn cold out here now. It was really nice yesterday, but holy shit, we are, uh, it's dropping quick. It's supposed to be one below tonight, so I guess we'll have a cold night out here. Letting the cameras die and all that. So now we are on to the inside work of this wood stove. And I'm glad we got the other stuff done yesterday, and today I made my final adjustments to the outside so I don't have to be up on that ladder anymore. So anyway, what we have, we have this already sawdust covered, this menagerie here to get on the pipe up above. So we have a retainer ring, it's a piece of trim that goes over this guy. That slides into our triple wall pipe. I said that it slides in, thank you. This goes over that. This gets screwed in. And then on top of this, this goes around the outside and it holds that in place. But the problem with what we're doing we're doing this a little different than what this kit's designed for, at least for the trim. So what I need to do, we're going to use all of this still, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're not going to use that square piece. We're going to drill this out in three or four spots and run threaded rod from this to some deck plates that are going to go up there. Um, and that way we can squeeze it all together. Because the only thing that holds the inside stovepipe onto that triple wall is this thing being sucked into the triple wall. So this is how we're going to do it. But anyway, stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it. Now, if any of you are curious how this thing's going to draft, this is our draft right now with no heat to it whatsoever. Okay. You can see that? Try it again. Can't even keep a lighter lit. I'd say that's a pretty good sign. Alright, so there's not a lot of science into what I'm doing right now. So all I'm going to do is just pop some holes, three holes. We're going to go with three pieces of threaded rod. And what we'll do, I'll try to get a couple up here. Because I want, I want to be able to have something to attach the heat shield i got to make for that elbow. And I want to put one kind of right down here in the middle. So I want them off just enough so I have room for nuts. And then we will go up here. Try to keep it equal over here, best we can anyway. Good old DeWalt Chucks. Okay. So this part will go on just like this. We'll slide over, our threaded rods will poke out. I'm going to make these threaded rods a lot longer so I can put our, uh, put our heat shield on there. Let's cut some rod and see if we can't get this thing, see if we can't get this done. I don't know if you folks have ever worked with shoe plates, deck plates, whatever you want to call them. They work very nicely, these applications. Yeah, a little trick when you're working with threaded rod, spin a nut over both ends of it. Helps quite a bit. Makes life a little easier when you're trying to get it all together. You don't want to be fighting the nuts on there up in the air. So with these, let me bring it up to you. 
A lot of you probably have seen these, probably know what they are. Where are we here? So it's going to go in just like that. You have those holes, screw them into the wall. This just feeds in. It's kind of a staple in the mechanical trades. So I won't tighten these uh, backer nuts all the way up yet. Just kind of get them on there hand tight. So I had too many comments on my six foot ladder. I'm standing too close to the top. You guys win. So I broke the 10 footer out. Hope you're happy with yourselves. Alright, let's see if we can fight this all on at once. Find the hole. Not as easy as it looks, is it, is it fellas? Well, that makes an awful racket, doesn't it guys? Halfway level. Okay. Run this out. up for some intense swearing and cursing. I don't think I have the energy to tonight after last night. Should have taken this lid off before. I tell you what, my hands are a little bit uh, chilly right now. Stinking winter. What about you guys, but I'm about, I'm about tired of winter this year. I think you can uh, decide to get warm any friggin' time it wants. If I get one more comment from Jimmy in North Carolina, my good buddy, the phone calls, it's 70 degrees here today. I might just scream. Did it again. Would have been 
nice that they gave you screws that actually uh, drilled into the metal nice. But why would you do that? I mean, what's the point? Oh, soft tap is where you at. See if this guy will fit in there. Now if I were my nut driver, what would I have done with me? Oh, I know. Pry right away. Just like everything else. It's like a scavenger hunt in this place every day, you know that? Let's see if we can get this halfway straight, halfway level. If I were my little level, what would I be? I'd be right there in the bench. Why well, it's terrible to be so young and so confused. Take take about an inch. You know what? Let's slide this a little closer so we can get it right. An accurate measurement. So we need to take an inch and three quarter off of this pipe. I think we can do that with ten snips just fine now. go. Oh, 
This is what I'm using for. Let's see if I can get you in there. Hello. Focus, damn you. You like AVE here. Yeah, she won't focus, but these are little tech screws. They're only half inch long. They're perfect for stove pipe. They stand up to heat very well. A lot better than most of the other stuff I see and use. Um, just perfect for wood stoves. At least for the chimneys. They're very strong too. They're a nice hard screw. I know it sounds dirty. Everything I do sounds dirty. Dirty and irreverent. Okay. Let's get her done. God, did I just really say let's get her done? That's awful. such a backwards deal right there. Now this is the fun part, the final lining up. Trying to get everything just right. screwing that yet and I'm not going to screw it up here yet. We're going to get this thing, we're going to move the wood stove. We've got the bottom, the bottom length of pipe is screwed in so it's level, it's where it's going to be. We're just going to get all this to line up with that. All it takes just a little bit of shucking around to the stove. It's not a big deal. It goes pretty fast. Once we have it where we want it, we zip the screws to it and we're ready to fire this thing up. Or so we'll, we'll throw a piece of metal on top of that also. about right where we want her. Pretty good there too. I like to put a minimum of three screws in a six inch pipe. And kind of space them around. That way it can't, you know, really you're taking away its ability to move anywhere pretty much. This one. Why not? Because we can, right? So I probably better get the. Uh, yeah, we'll leave these here for a minute. All right, heat shield time. At least enough for one to get us through the night. definitely have to get a proper heat shield on this but it is amazing how much heat a piece of sheet metal can block and redirect makes a huge difference it'll look kind of cheesy for tonight but can't really be helped. Uh, 
Now you see why we left these uh, top rods long here. Well, you guys are here for the very first fire in our timber frame. Very exciting moment. So we have our fire extinguisher handy. It is all inspected. It is all up to date. That is very important, guys. A lot of people, they get a fire extinguisher and then they, uh, they just leave it kicking around for years and nobody ever does anything with it. Well, that stuff can take on moisture if the o-ring and the head gets bad. Believe it or not, spiders build, uh, some spiders will build webs inside the, uh, the nozzle. So anyway, testing out a new chimney, you don't want to just go, you don't want to just go building a huge fire in the darn thing. You want to make sure it drafts well. So you light a piece of, you a couple pieces of cardboard, light them up, throw them in there, and then just see what happens. Now we're looking for, move you guys here, I should have cleaned that glass where it's going to condensate a little bit too. Now you see how that flames is, yeah, I guess it is kind of hard to see. So I'm going to damper this down, you guys can see what I was talking about with an airtight stove. Fire just pretty well goes right out. Open it back up, and that's what I'm talking about. So, that's drafting nice. Let's get a fire going in this thing. Kind of important to do that step. It'll uh, kind of helps in the long run. In your first fire, you shouldn't do a big roaring one. Just get one hot enough to get the chimney up to temperature, and kind of the rest will take care of itself. This is kind of very exciting. You know, this is the third time in my life that I have installed this wood stove. And kind of really special to be doing it in this one. I've done it alone twice. And the first time I was eight or nine years old, my uncle and I put it in. And he was the kind of guy who believed never too young to lift and lug. And maybe that's why I do it so much now without thinking about it. Now, this one's pretty dry so it shouldn't have any issues taking off. That's the other thing guys, you're going to be tempted just to burn every scrap you have on the floor. Don't be throwing green wood in your chimneys or in your wood stoves. That will creosote up so fast and so badly it could create a really wicked situation for you. And we don't want that. Nobody wants to see anybody's place burned down. All right. There she is. Let's see what develops. Oh, what a nice feeling. Well, what do you guys think of that? The sad part is I'm sitting here and I can still see my breath. So, uh, wow, it is awful nice to have that done, have it running. First fire in the barn. It's a little scary to be honest with you because, uh, like I said, I'd hate to see this go up in smoke. As for all the comments about the ladder and stuff like that, guys, uh, doing things alone, I know I shouldn't all the time, but for all of those of you who said get help, get help, get help, there isn't often help around, otherwise I would. I would love to have had somebody else climbing on that ladder. But the other part of that is it's, it's not just about stubbornness. It's not just about wanting to do things alone. If somebody else were to come here and fall off of this building like I did and get hurt, that'd be an awful hard thing to live with knowing that somebody got hurt helping me out. It was really hard for me to let somebody else do this roof and let somebody else 
set the final timbers. And that's not so much a control thing as just the worry of, okay, what if somebody else has an accident on this thing? This is a big building. It's a big project. I mean, it would be awful if somebody else uh, took the same kind of ride I did. But, uh, and also to those of you who uh, mentioned getting the fire department here to help with this and whatnot, it's a good idea, guys, but this is what I do for a living. I, I vent things, I make things heat, I make things cool. I'm very familiar with this type of thing. It is my bread and butter. It's what I do to pay the bills. And I'm not bragging, but I'm very good at it. I wouldn't be where I am if I wasn't. But um, anyway, very excited. I do have the fire extinguisher out here. I'm not gonna leave this thing burning too awful long. Uh, this is the only wood I'm gonna put in it. We're gonna let this thing go out before I go in for the night. And uh, for one, it's kind of pointless to run the fire when I have so much closing up to do still in this end of the barn. But uh, thinking tomorrow we're going to start hitting that. You know, tomorrow evening we'll start closing it up in here. And like I said, this uh, I won't be running this stove when I'm not out here, at least not for a long time, not until I'm comfortable with it that nothing's going to happen. The venting, it's perfect. Uh, it's... I, I cleared my two foot above the, the ridge of the barn, which is great, because another concern I had was sparks sometimes. If you see sparks coming out of a chimney, sometimes they go down, and then I have that concern of it, what if they land back in the building or something, but um, I'm high enough up there, I really don't think that's going to be an issue. Not to mention, like I said, a, a big thing, you guys burn in wood, especially in a wood shop, if, if you have... There, I have a ton of scrap in here, but this is all scrap that I will not burn in this thing right now because it's pretty wet, it's pretty green. I will soot this chimney up so fast, and then I will really be asking for disaster with the chimney fire. One chimney fire in this building has gone. I mean, it's, it's gone. So we will do anything to avoid that. Now, as far as clearances go, we only needed 15 inches off the back wall. We have... Uh, probably a little over two feet, so we're fine there. The triple wall pipe requires two inches of clearance all the way around it. We have that just fine. The single wall stove pipe requires 18 inches of clearance off of combustibles. And we make that except for where the elbow is. We have a heat shield up there right now. And uh, pretty quick, probably next video or two, we will be making a proper heat shield with uh, K-wool blankets sandwiched in between sheet metal. That will, that's, that's pretty much when you buy a heat shield for something like that, that's what it is. It's usually sheet metal with K-wool in between it. So that will work just fine. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm enjoying feeling just at least a little bit of heat right here. That's gonna be nice when we get the stairwell. I, I guess I'm gonna have to close that up because that's that's a big source of cold right now that in that eave wall. Then we can start insulating. We start getting this uh, getting this roof. I'll probably start on this end just so we're not condensating right here above the stove and dripping all over the place. That will be an issue in here if I don't get it taken care of soon. Uh, get it too warm in here and it will rain. So we're really going to have to watch that. But uh, anyway, have a good night, everybody. I'll catch you on the next one.